recently over on the New Tech forums, user Keith23 asked how to simulate a roll of carpet as it's unrolled. And of course, um, as usual, there was a lot of discussion and we came up with several different techniques that um, he could use to apply. But Stream came up with one that uh, came kind of out of, a blue, out of the blue uh, using the old deformer tools. And though I say the older uh, uh, deformer tools, uh, they're still very valid and very useful. And actually, uh, the, the concept that he came up with works really fast and uh, pretty easy. Instead of using bones or lots of morphs or uh, different things like that, using the deform tools, uh, the bin tool in particular works out great. Let's take a look at setting this up, but also in the process I'd like to show you uh, just kind of a taste of the deform tools and how they work in layout. So let's go ahead and close this. Let's create a couple objects to work with. Um, we'll start with the carpet. I'm going to grab the box tool and we'll just give it not, we won't make the carpet this thick. We'll bring it down some and I'm going to give it some segments because we are going to deform this. So I'm using the up arrow keys uh, key and the right arrow key to give it some segments and that should work for this. And I'm going to go ahead and hit tab so we can work with subdivisional surfaces. And knowing that my pivot point is at the origin per layer, I'm going to go ahead and slide this over and we'll have our pivot point here at the the base of our carpet. And I'm going to go ahead and save this out. So file, save object as, and we'll call this carpet. Always good to have a version number, so 001. Save. And then let's create one more object just so that we have uh, another object to work with to show off some of the other tools. So I'm going to just go file, new, and We'll create, we don't need as many segments as before. So I'm just gonna go back to, to no segments and then just add a few. Okay, that should do. Just uh, actually I'm gonna add a couple more this way and a couple more this way. And let's go ahead and center that. I'm gonna actually, add, I'm gonna move it up to the base and hit tab. So really we've just got a, a subdivisional surface, a sub patch uh, box, just so that we can deform it and not worry about it uh, breaking, uh, you know, being too low poly for that. And let's go ahead and save that. So file, save object as, and we'll just call this tower for lack of a better name. Okay, and let's start by sending this object, the tower, over to layout, and we'll work with this, and then we'll get to the carpet. This will allow us to explore some of the tools and have a better understanding of what the tools are doing before we try and do the rolling carpet. So we'll come over here and send object to layout. Okay, so here we are. Let's go ahead and start taking a look at some of the deform tools. So I have my object. I'm gonna come over to Properties under the deform tab I'm gonna to go to add displacement and we've got different deform tools we've got deform bend pole shear taper twist and vortex now these work very similar to the way they work in modeler so let's take a look we'll start with bend we're gonna be using that for the carpet now it went ahead and jumped and did something that I had no control over because it hasn't been applied yet we need to create an effect base and effect handle and usually those are other objects but I can use null objects for this I don't really need to go and build new objects so I'm gonna hit uh, OK I'm gonna turn that off for right now because that might kinda get annoying if we have that that circle going on let's go ahead and close this for now and I'm gonna go ahead and create two nulls the first null I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name I like to name the nulls otherwise you might end up with you know 20 nulls in the scene and you're trying to figure out what's what uh, and for uh, that we'll use base and I'm gonna make another null and I'm gonna call this handle I'm not being very creative with the names I'm basing it off of what the deform tools are looking for it's looking for a base and it's looking for a handle and I'm gonna move the handle up to here so I've got my base and I've got my handle and I've got my object. So with my object selected, I'm going to go P for properties. I'm going to go ahead and activate the bin tool. And for the base, I'm going to choose base. 
and for the effect handle I'm going to choose handle and for the axis I'm going to go ahead and choose Y because I'm going to bend down the Y hit OK and just I'm going to move over the uh, frame slider here just so that we can refresh the screen so what we have is our rig using the deform tool if I move the handle it's going to bend but the base isn't so I can move this around and so without bones or dynamics or or any kind of deformation tool other than the deform bend tool I've got this guy kind of going to town now I can use more than one deformer at a time if I want but for right now let's just use one at a time so I'm gonna go select this object again P for properties I'm gonna turn off the bend and let's go over to let's say twist okay double click and I'm gonna choose for the effect base I'm gonna choose base and for the handle I'm gonna choose handle and I could change the axis but I'm gonna have it running down the Y as well and I could change the shape of my twist here but let's go ahead and just throw that back there hit OK scrub the timeline just to change it up and I'm going to Y for rotate and I'm gonna twist it again no bones just using this deform tool it's the twist deform tool okay so I'm gonna undo and select this object again turn off twist and let's add taper okay now again it'll automatically do something but we're not in control of that until we activate by selecting a base so base and a handle handle and we'll go down the Y and again we have some options here but let's go ahead and use the default okay and now when I refresh and select the top here I can shift H or modify size it's the same shortcuts that we use over in modeler and then I can size this up and I'm tapering it based on the scale of my handle which is this null right here okay so what we can also do is turn them all on okay so I'm using the same base and the same handle for all three let's go ahead and close this down and I'm going to size it up a little bit Y for rotate and I'm gonna twist it okay and then T for move and I'm gonna bend it okay so I can bend it around so I have full control We can kinda have this swaying underwater or something like that I have full control over my mesh based on these two nulls wherever I place the base if I were to just to give you an idea let's go back to P for properties and I'm going to turn everything off except for twist so I only have twist here and I'm gonna grab the base null just so you understand what the base null is doing as I move it up actually I'm not moving it up in that case I was moving it in the Z I'm gonna move it up in the Y and so it's only twisting from the base up towards the handle it's not twisting down here and the same thing would happen for bend and for vortex and let's take a look at what else is there we've got um, let's move over to the tower object so we have bend, pole, shear, taper, twist, and vortex. And again, they work just like they do in Modeler, except we're over here in Layout using them to animate with. So of course, if I wanted to animate this twist, let's select this handle, and I'm going to come over to Heading and turn that to zero, and then come over to frame 20, and I'm going to twist this around and then as I scrub my timeline you can see I can animate this so it's a way of animating some of the modified tools that we find in modeler but we'll do it here in layout so let's use what we've learned here to apply it to rolling up a carpet so I'm going to go ahead and clear this scene and let's hop over to modeler and we already have the carpet object built let's just send it over to layout here we go now just so that they don't get in the way I'm gonna go ahead and hide and lock my camera and light and to do that I'm gonna head over to the scene editor and we've got this little eye icon here and I'm just gonna 
click on the little dots which will they will, will no longer be visible and just so that I don't accidentally select them anyway I'm gonna lock them so we'll just be dealing with our our carpet here okay and so knowing that we're going to use the bend function we don't have to apply it first we can go ahead and set up our our nulls so I'm gonna go over to items add null and this one I'm going to call base and this time I'm going to go ahead and dress up my null a little bit just so that it's easier to see what's what. Let's make this one a box and I'm going to move it over here and then let's make our handle. So null handle and we'll make this one a ball just so it's something different. And I'm going to go ahead and move my handle up here just as kind of a starting place of where I'm going to do my my bend. So now that I've got these two objects, uh, these two, my base and my handle, I'm going to select this object, P for properties, under the deform tab, add displacement, let's choose bend, double click on it, and for effect base, let's choose base, for handle, choose handle. See how by naming it base and handle, we're not trying to remember, okay, was uh, was null 1 the base? Was null 2 the base? And null 1 the handle? So again, n naming conventions are key, I think, in any production environment. And as you can see here, it's just easy to match up base and handle. Let's go ahead and um, we're not going to bend down the Y in, in this case because we want to we want to bend, we want to roll this across the X. So I'm going to choose the X axis and click OK. And let's close this for now. So I'm going to grab my base handle and as I move it away from my handle, my carpet rolls up. Now we're close to what we need, but if we, let's zoom in, okay, and what happens is as it rolls, it rolls onto itself, which doesn't look right I mean that's not what would happen it needs to kind of coil in so there's a trick for this and let's let's try it out so we need to offset it so that this end doesn't match up with this end so one thing that we could do is we could build a morph for that so I'm going to select this object and actually we have it loaded up in modeler so let's go over to modeler and let's build a really basic morph I'm gonna come over here to M and new and we'll call this rotate for lack of a creative name. Rotate will work. Create. And then Y for rotate. And then I'm just going to rotate it up some. It doesn't really matter how much. You can. It's better to overshoot than anything. This is way more distance than we're going to need. But we don't have to use our morph 100%, which is something that a lot of people forget when they're building morphs and using morphs. Just because the morph can go to 100% and beyond doesn't mean you have to use all of it. So now that we have this, I'm going to hit S for save. Synchronize layout. Pop over to layout. And what I'm going to do is, because we can always keyframe this back, I'm going to roll this up and we'll zoom into it and basically I want to offset it until I can see that it's coiled the way I want it to because I have control over that. I'm going to select this object, P for properties, under deform, add displacement. Let's go ahead and uh, under here under add displacement let's choose morph mixer. We're going to gain access to the morph we just created. Double click I'm going to close the object properties and I'm going to close this up a little smaller just so that we can see what's going on. And I'm just going to use some of the morph. As you can see, now it's starting to coil in. I can have it coil in a lot or a little. I'm just going to have it coil in enough to where it's kind of touching and that works for me. Okay, so once we have that, we can zoom out and I'm going to pull this back. Now by doing that I've lifted my carpet up off the ground. I'm going to switch over to the back view so we can really see. Okay so it's touching the ground over here if we want to call this line our ground but it's not over here. Well, well that's kind of cheating. We know that something's not right. Nothing would hold this up like this um, so we need to fix that. So to do that we're just going to rotate this down so that it looks like it's touching the ground. 
Okay. If you notice the bounding box here, these, this dotted line, you can see that that's what our object actually looks like and the morph is what's lifting it up. So with that done, I can go T for move, select my base handle, and as it rolls up, it coils up. Okay. So we're using a morph to help offset the, the, the start here to the end here so that it's not right on top of it it looks like it's being rolled up okay now I can always go and adjust my handles so if I want to change this I can adjust my handle here and I can make that coil tighter okay we're kind of zoomed far away um, but I'll zoom in so that we can see what's going on see by moving that handle farther away it made the coils tighter and so now I can roll if I wanted to roll bigger, I'd move the, the handle closer. Let's go into perspective mode just so we can take a, another look at this. Okay, so just by animating one null object, this handle, I can roll the entire carpet up with one move. So to actually animate that, because right now I've just been doing a real-time preview just by moving it around, I can come down here to my timeline and let's just say on frame 30 it's going to in a 30 uh, frames per second animation it's going to take a second to roll up and I'll just roll it up and now as I scrub through you can see that the carpet is rolling using the bin deformer in layout so again I'd like to thank uh, stream for the idea of doing this it's a great idea it's much quicker I believe than setting up uh, a bunch of bones. If all you want it to do is roll up, why not take advantage of the deform tools in layout?